Welcome to Location, the Locator News Web Edition, delivering top stories from a top newspaper. I'm Casey Minnick. And I'm Jamie Santoro, and here's your news now. The Catholic Relief Services Student Migration Group held a rally on February 16th to encourage our politicians to reform current immigration laws. Cabrini hosted students from St. Joseph's University, and together over 600 letters were sent to politicians about the issue. The group also has started a winter clothing drive on campus. Clothing will be donated to Nationality's Relief Services Center, a group in Philadelphia that helps refugees transition into life in America. To keep up with social networking trends, Gmail, which is powered by Google, debuted its newest tool called Buzz. Buzz gives Gmail users the option to stay updated with fellow users. While there have been claims that Buzz is the newest competitor to the social networking sites Facebook and Twitter, developers say that it can be used more as a tool than for entertainment. Buzz gives users the option to share status changes, similar to the tweets of Twitter, as well as the capability to upload photos. While it's hard to say if Buzz will eventually overtake Facebook and Twitter, some of its features will give a competitive advantage over other social networking sites. This year, Cabrini's Founder Day went a different route. On February 23rd, when the campus gathered to remember the founding president of the college, students and faculty talked about their values in This I Believe projects. This I Believe is a way to get students to think about and challenge their beliefs. Dr. Mary Laver, Director of International Partnerships said, the faculty is not sure if this is a format that will continue for future Founders Day celebrations. College President Marie George is currently trying to decide what she hopes to see for the Founders Day celebration in the coming years. And now let's take a look at how students presented their essays. Hi, I'm Danielle McLaughlin on Location, and today we're here at the Grace Hall Atrium in celebration of Founders Day, which was held February 23rd here at Cabrini College. On February 23rd, Cabrini College celebrated their annual Founders Day celebration. Several students were selected to present This I Believe essays and poems in the Grace Hall Atrium in honor of Founders Day. I discovered that if I set my mind to it and I work hard, I can take my ideas and my passion and turn it into action. It's all pure luck, like winning the lottery. But I think a miracle is a combination of hard work and determination. Here we decided that we wanted to do kind of something that builds community more and, um, and something that reflects uh, the mission of our college. And so we asked people to write this I believe statements and um, we got some great ones in and we think it kind of um, reflects kind of who we are as a community here. Bacon or cinnamon rolls wafted in from the kitchen. Exhausted from my week, nothing makes me happier than relaxing with my little niece in my arms. I'm Danielle McLaughlin on location. Back to you at the news desk. And now let's get the latest gossip with Jake and Gianna on the dirt sheet. What's up, all you stars and studs? I'm Jake Vettorano. And I'm Gianna Chicatino, and welcome to The Dirt Sheet, where we give you the latest in entertainment. A rare first edition comic of Superman has sold for over $1 million. Just think, it was once available for only 10 cents. I wish I bought it. Dork. <laughs> Tiger Woods held a public press conference to address his adultery this past week. But he didn't really tell us anything that we don't already know. Hillary Duff recently got engaged to her longtime boyfriend, Mike Comrie. I wonder if she or her cartoon animated conscience accepted the proposal. Pedophiles everywhere continue to go crazy for Justin Bieber. The singer was recently making a public appearance in Paris when the mob was so big that the event had to be shut down. I can't wait until he hits puberty and isn't famous anymore. Speaking of pedophiles, chat roulette is reeling in perverts around the world. The chat room site allows users to sit face to face or face to genitals with other strangers through webcams. Well, that's all we've got for you today. Hopefully nobody we know uses it. I'm Gianna Chicatino. And I'm Jake Federano. The Glamazon. Oh my god, pit stains! Ugh. Oh god. Well, you know, if you really want to get some hardcore pit stains, check out sophomore Kim Carlson's Zumba class in the Dixon Center every Monday at 6 o'clock. Let's see how they stay moist.
Your fitness, ladies. Yes, very sweaty. And now it's time for your weather with Liz. Hey everyone, I'm Liz Scopletti and I'm here to give you your weather forecast for the next couple of days. To start off on Thursday, there's actually a winter storm watch in effect. Expect a lot of snow between Thursday and Friday. The highs and lows will both be in the low 30s. Friday, snow continuing but tapering off towards the end of the day, with the high around 38 and the low 30. Saturday, cloudy skies with highs in the upper 30s to low 40s and lows in the upper 20s. And to end your weekend, partly cloudy skies with highs around 40 and the lows in the 30s. That's all I have for you today. Back to you at the news desk. And now let's take a trip around the world. A North Atlantic Treaty Organization airstrike in Afghanistan killed at least 27 civilians on Monday. General McChrystal apologized to the Afghan president for the airstrike and vowed to closely coordinate and exercise maximum care before conducting any military operation to avoid further civilian casualties. Operation Sledgehammer, a plot to overthrow the Turkish government, has been foiled. In simultaneous raids in eight sites, over 40 military commanders were arrested for conspiring to bomb mosques and shoot down a Turkish fighter jet to start an armed conflict with Greece. The arrests were made after finding secret weapon caches and gathering wiretaping evidence. Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has put Australia on permanent high alert for terror threats. Rudd stated that it is clear some of the threat we now face comes the Australian-born, Australian-educated, and Australian residents. And now let's check in with Nick for your sports. What's going on, all you sports fans? Nick Goulden here with your two-minute drill. In a recent breaking news story, Philadelphia Eagles running back Brian Westbrook has been released from the team. The 30-year-old has had several injury-plagued seasons and his numbers have dwindled in the past few years. The U.S. men's hockey team surprised the world last Sunday by beating Canada in their possible route to a gold. Canada, which prides themselves on its hockey, was taken aback by the inspiring play of the Americans. Goalie for the U.S. team, Ryan Miller, played one of the best games of his life, saving nearly 45 shots, while Brian Rafalski scored two goals in the 5-3 victory. Rafalski said, we know we can beat anybody now. And now it's time for your game of the week. The women's basketball team faced off against the Centenary Cyclones in some playoff action Tuesday night at Nerney Fieldhouse with their back-to-back -back conference titles on the line. The Cavaliers dug themselves out of an early hole, trailing by a game-high 15 points before Dina D'Amico caught fire. The senior playing in perhaps her last game scored a season-high 26 points to bring her team back from the deficit. By the middle of the second half, Cavaliers found themselves down by just five. The game came down to the wire, and after a quick time out, Cabrini finally took a lead as junior guard Julie Bonomo put the team up by one with a deep three with just 11 seconds on the clock. But the Cyclones answered right back with the lay-in that sealed the Cavs' demise. D'Amico had one last rush, but time ran out before she could get a shot off. And just like that, the Cavaliers were eliminated from the playoffs. The final score, Centenary 67, Cabrini 66. The Cavs will find out if they are invited to the ECAC tournament later this week. Cabrini men's basketball swept the CSAC Special Awards this season. Coach Marcus Kahn received the Coach of the Year Award for the second consecutive year. Kevin Misavicious was selected as the Player of the Year, and freshman Corey Lemons was recognized as the Rookie of the Year. Cabrini is the number one seed in this year's CSAC tournament and has home court advantage throughout. That's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks for watching this week's Web Edition, and be sure to tune in next week for another great episode. I'm Jamie Santoro. And I'm Casey Minnick, and thanks for stopping by.